Okay, at the bottom of page 16 is the homework like that usually is. That homework out of the textbook, page 727 to 728, is due on Thursday. Okay, I want your complete focus tonight to be on the quiz. So that homework tonight for day four, page 727 out of the textbook, that's due on Thursday. I'm not going to check it or look for it tomorrow. It's due on Thursday. Right above it, though, you will see there is a Delta map. That's not an assignment. That's if you want to prepare or not for tomorrow. Uh, quickly, tomorrow's quiz. There's 21 points, seven questions, if that makes you feel warm and comfortable inside. Uh, here's the meat. The meat of the, te of the quiz is three formulas you have to know. One being the one on the formula sheet, circumference pi d, or if you use 2 pi r. And the other two formulas are your length of an arc. One is measure of the arc. over 360 times pi d. That's if my angle is in degrees. And then the other one I showed you yesterday, s equals theta r, and that's if we're in radians. That's the meat of the, te of the quiz right there, are these three things, circumference and length of an arc in two different forms. Uh, you will have a clock question tomorrow. Okay, there will be a clock. Uh, I'm not saying it's similar to the one you did uh, for homework, but there are a couple questions in the Delta math that involve clocks if you want to take a look at that. And then just a heads up, you probably need Pythag tomorrow. All right, days one through three, what I'm about to teach you will not be on the quiz tomorrow. Nothing about it will be. Questions? That's it. If you want to review, review on your own with the Delta math. Any multiples? Uh, let me take a look. Sure there are. I just don't know how many. One, two, two. Two out of seven. And a reminder, I cannot help you with your calculator tomorrow. So if you need to convert radians to degrees, degrees to radians, I cannot help you. Make sure you know how to do that by tomorrow. All right, last call. Anything else? All right, let's do it. Let's go into our new topic here, day four. Not on the quiz at all. Uh, please don't put this on your diagram at all. I just have a quick question before I introduce this new type of angle. Uh, if this is going to be my center here, uh, again, you don't, no need to copy this part down. What type of angle did I just make right there? What type of angle did I make right there? Right there. That is called a what type of angle in this circle? It's the only type we've gone over. Only type we've gone over. Uh, uh, Zoe, what's it called? Central. Central angle. Good. I was ready to call it the Doyle angle, but we're all right. Good. And I, I laugh because I have another, I don't know, anybody know Reagan Brown in the, my third period class? She does the same exact thing you did. All right, and then she got called on today again. It was like, eh, what do I do? So don't worry, Doyle, you're not you're not alone. It's called a central angle. How do you find its measure? How do you find how many degrees are in a central angle? It's a fact I gave you. It's always equal to what? The central angle's measure is always equal to the same measure, Gabby, as the arc, right? They're always the same. Here's a new type of angle. So you got central down pad, it looks like. Central angle, you got good to go. Put a point somewhere on your circle, please. Put a point on your circle for me. I'm going to introduce a new angle now. We know all about central angles. Let me introduce a new angle. Put a point somewhere on your circle. And then from that point, draw two chords. From that point, draw two chords for me. You have created our new type of angle, which is called a cent. Ooh, almost did it there. Which is called an inscribed angle. Inscribed. Look where the vertex is on the circle. If the vertex is on the circle, we call it inscribed, right? So again, quick recap: inscribed, central. Okay, inscribed, central. Those are your two angles inside a circle. Now, central angles. Zoe just who just told us? Gabby just told us it's equal to the arc. Not true for an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is not equal to its arc. Instead, 
An inscribed angle is equal to half, half its arc measure. All right, in half now. So you can see this visually. If the arc was 200 degrees, that means my inscribed angle is 100 degrees. That's what that means. Okay. So central angle is equal to the arc. Inscribed half its arc. Half its arc measure. All right. Let's do this. Let's do some examples. You're welcome. Your diagrams are already filled in with all the necessary information. Uh, we're looking for the measure of arc BC right now. Measure of arc BC. All right, I'm going to take this slow at first. Look at angle A, which we've labeled as 80. What type of angle is angle A? What do we call that type of angle there? Zoe, back to you. That's it? Inscribed angle. And we just learned that any inscribed angle is half its arc, which in this case happens to be BC. So I got I I knew angle A was 80 because I took half of whatever BC was. So how do you want to find BC then? Ho oh, five, Haley. Double it. Perfect. So I'm going to go two times 80. So that arc had to have been 160 degrees because, again, I took half of it to get 80. All right, let's keep going. Part B is angle B. Angle B. I'm always going to... I'm always going to start, I'm going to start asking this a ton, what type of angle it is, because now we have two types, central and inscribed. So angle B, what type of angle are we looking at there? Oh, there we go. 10, Matt, what type of angle? Inscribed. Inscribed. So I just showed you guys, inscribed angles found by taking half its arc measure. Angle B belongs to what arc? Matt? Uh, AC. AC, what's the degree measure of AC? 88. There you go. So I'm going to take half of 88. 44 degree angle, angle B. All right, next up, angle C. And before I ask, I just want to remind people, I know we're in the circle unit. That doesn't require you to use a circle fact every time. You get there however you can get there. All right, you use September through March. Just because we're in the circle unit doesn't mean you have to use a circle fact. You get there however you are comfortable. All right, how are you going to get to angle C here? Oh, there we go. Deep. Gabby, back to you. You know, two out of three angles in a triangle. Don't make it difficult, right? Don't make it difficult. Take your 180 minus the other two. 180 and 44. Holy jeez. 100. That's going to give me 56. 56 degrees. And one more. How about arc AB? In the measure of arc AB, there are two different ways you could get there. Let me know how, how you're going to get there. Measure of arc AB. Two different ways you could get there. Your path. Your path. Oh, Gabby, you're on fire today. 56 times 2. Okay, so Gabby's going to take the inscribed angle she just gave me and double it. Anybody do 360 minus the other two arcs? Because you can do it that way too. Right? 360 total minus the 160 and the 88. Yep. So double the 56, 112 degrees. All right, any questions? All right, so we I think we pick up that an inscribed angle is half its arc. Let's learn some other things about inscribed angles. Uh, you guys go ahead and figure this one out on your own. The second example, can you find those two angles for me, please? Find those two angles. I don't want to know what the angles came out to be in degrees. I just want to know what you found out about the angles. What did you find out about those two angles right there? Whoa, Zoe. I'm going back and forth with you guys. 
They're con they should have been congruent, right? Because you took half of 124, and we got 62 degrees. Uh, I didn't care that you found that they were 62. This was the important part, that you found out they were congruent, because you just found out fact number two about inscribed angles. What was fact number one? Oh, yeah, that they're half the arc. Fact number two, if you have two inscribed angles, you guys are actually going to do this theorem for me. If you have two inscribed angles, what did you notice about those two inscribed angles? Why did they come out to be the same? Those two inscribed angles share the same arc, right? I'm going to say drawn to the same arc. Two inscribed angles drawn to the same arc. And Zoe, what'd you find out about them? Congruent. Are congruent. There you go. So anytime two inscribed angles are drawn to the same arc, they are congruent. Ooh, you know where we're gonna use this pretty, pretty soon. Not so much in algebra questions, but reasons column of your proof. Yeah. Yes, I know you can't wait. I think Thursday we get back at it. Right before break, what a way to send you out to break. Doing proofs again. All right, you're on number three. Go ahead, number three. Use this theorem now. Matt, you excited? Proofs coming back? You guys can whine and complain all you want, but I guarantee this time next year when you're in Algebra 2, you'll be coming back begging to do proofs. Begging me to do proofs again. But that'll be too bad because I'm just going to pretend I don't know you next year so. Like I never had yet as a student. Most of you guys are seeing, hey, those are two inscribed angles drawn to arc AD. So you're setting it equal to each other, and that's great. That's not what I'm going to be impressed with. You guys keep working. We'll shut down here. I'll be more impressed with how you use that answer to get arc AD. Should I still call on somebody for X? Yeah? Yeah, call it someone. Should I do it, Haley? Yep. Call on somebody for X? Yep, sure. Here you go. Oh, sorry. Z, what'd you get? Five, yep. Yeah. All right, again, not impressed that you found X equals five. I want you to describe to me how you got AC. All right, how do you use five to find the measure of that arc A? How about AD? Not AC, one job. All right, how are you using five? Talk to me here. How are you using five? Ian? Um, three times one of those elements. So you're taking five. Where are you substituting it in for? X. Yep, into either one? Yeah. All right, I'll do 6X plus 26. Now, that just gives me the inscribed angle. How are you getting to the arc? Times two. Double it. Yep, double it. How about I actually substitute in five and then I double it. So we should end up with 112 again. All right. Theorem number two. Oh, what, wait, what's that? Oh, you want more inscribed angle facts and theorems. You got it, kids. You got it. Let's do this. I'll feed you two more. Oh, look at that. That diagram looks intimidating. Let's see, what are we responsible here for? The value of X, the value of Y, and what arc BC measures. Okay. Ooh, AB is a diameter. Don't overlook that fact there. That might come into play, and ABD is a straight line. All right, you ready? Let's do X first. Let's do X. What type of angle is X? Let's look at the type of angle it is. What type of angle do I have there? Uh, Kissinger, what do I have there? That's it? 
Okay, so I just learned today that an inscribed angle is half an arc's measure. Oh, can you guys find the arc we got to take half of? What arc belongs to angle X? So let's see if we can find that first. So I look at angle X, I see it's drawn to point A and point B, so we're going to take half of that arc right there. Does everyone see that? We're going to take half of that arc measure. It's not labeled. All right, how many degrees is that sucker? I don't know. It's not labeled, but here's the catch. Remember, AB was a diameter, All right? So I have two half circles. So what type of arc is that? Again, we went over on day two, I believe. That's called a what type of part of the circle? Where am I going here? Doyle, come on. Yeah, there you go, Doyle. You're back. A semicircle, how many, bonus, how many degrees was it? Yeah, 180 degrees. So does everyone see how we, why it's that arc and how we know that arc's 180? The diameter key is huge. The diameter given is huge. So that's going to be a right angle at angle X. Oh, it's been a while, huh? Since we put the old right angle symbols. Theorem number three. Anytime, and it's already written here for you, anytime you have an inscribed angle drawn to a, Doyle, what was this called again? Anytime you have an inscribed angle drawn to a semicircle, automatically a right angle. Okay. Anytime an inscribed angle is drawn to a semicircle, it's a right angle. Done. No questions asked. All good? All right. And then let's find the rest of them here. How about Y? How do you want to find angle Y? Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. One, five. Gabby, how do you find angle Y? 180 minus yep, 180 minus 90 minus 58. Oh, 32 degrees. Yeah. All right, and the final part is, what's the measure of arc BC? Measure of arc BC. And how do you want to find it? Oh, Gabby, are you kidding me today? 32 times two. Yep, double it. Inscribed angle of 32 belongs to arc BC, so I would double that inscribed angle to get to the arc. 64 degrees. Anything confusing before we get to the last part? All right, final fact of the day. Final inscribed angle fact of the day. You guys are going to do a little diagram for me right below this last theorem. Draw yourself a circle for me. And then I would like a quadrilateral, four sides, right? I would like a quadrilateral inscribed in that circle. Where's it going? Inside or outside? I want a quadrilateral inscribed. Where's the quad going? Inside and all four vertices should be touching. Okay, I don't care what type of quadrilateral you put in there, it doesn't matter just as long as it's got four sides and then they're all, all four vertices are touching the circle. Call your quadrilateral A, B, C, D, go ahead. Again, I don't care where you start A as long as you go clockwise or counterclockwise after. And here's the fact, the final fact to the day. If you have a quadrilateral that's inscribed, the opposite angles, the opposite angles are supplementary. What did that word mean again? The opposite angles add to 180. So angle D plus angle B equals 180 degrees. And then angle A and angle C add up to 180. All right, so any inscribed quadrilateral. Opposite angles, not congruent, supplementary. And then you guys are going to end class right here, right on this problem, using all of today's facts, as many as you can here. So I'll give you the 86, you give me the arc and angle F.
Sure, Josh. See you later. All right, here we go. Uh, GFE, how do you get to it? GFE, how do we get to GFE? Amy, how would you get to GFE? Good, 86, inscribed angle. I know it's tough to see, but that inscribed angle belongs to GFE. So I take 86, double it, and we end up with something with a four in it, 174. So there's 174 degrees in this arc. And then how'd you get to angle F now? How do we get to angle F? Oh, let's finish the strong. Matt, come on. How do you get to angle F? It's supplementary. Why? Because we're like, yeah. Oh, they're opposite. Yes. Quadrilateral inscribed opposite angles are supplementary. 180 minus 86. 94 degrees for angle F. Okay. A reminder, you got your delta math to review for the quiz, and then you have your inscribed angle homework due on Thursday. Due on Thursday. Find one of the two to do right now and get going.